Today we're going to talk about polygons of constraint. So a polygon of constraint is a graphical representation of a solution set when a system of first degree inequalities in two variables represent a set of constraints. So what does all of these words mean? So polygon, you have to remember polygon is a shape with many, many sides. So we're going to create shapes with many sides that have different constraints. So we're going to use a system. If you remember, a system is more than one first degree means that we're going to have x and y exponent 1. So last year you worked with second degree with x squared and in, in grade in secondary 3 you started the first degree equations or inequalities. Inequalities you have to remember it's smaller than, greater than, smaller or equal to, greater or equal to. And in two variables means we're going to have something like x and y. And so that's going to give us a set. And then we're going to have to find the rule or it's not the rule, but the shape of that polygon. So, for example, if you have to graph this, so this is a system because it's more than one. So we call this a system of inequality. Uh, inequalities, sorry, because we have more than one. So the first one, when you're going to graph it, I would like to know which one you're graphing. So you can write number one, x is smaller or equal to two. So you come on your x axis at two. So this is one, this is two. And it has to be smaller or equal. So it's going to give you a full line. And it's smaller than or equal to. So we're going to shade this way. You can shade the whole graph, but it's going to be very messy. So I'm going to use the arrow to show you. So this is inequality number one. Now I'm going to use just a different color to show you inequality number two. This is y smaller or equal to three. So here you have one, two, three, smaller or equal. So it's going to be a full line. This is my line inequality number three. And it's smaller or equal to, so it's going to go down. And the last one, that's the trickiest because it's more complex inequality. Because you have x and y uh, spread out on both sides. So the first thing, if you want to graph this line, it doesn't look like a line. So you need to isolate your y. So try to isolate your y. So the, your x is going to go on the other side, right? So your x, you're going to get rid of your x here. So minus x minus x. I'm just going to come up here to show you the work. So now you have 2y is greater or equal to minus x over 2 minus x plus 3. Now, if you have to do minus x over 2 minus x, this one is over 1. So to be able to subtract them, they need to be on the same denominator. So this one is over 2. I'm going to put this one also over 2 by doing times 2. So times 2 at the bottom, times 2 at the top. Now I can put them together. So I have 2y is greater or equal to minus 3x over 2 plus 3. Now I need to get only y. So I need to get rid of my 2. So I need to divide everything by 2. So to get my y, I need minus 3x over 2 but over 2 plus 3 over 2. Now, if you remember how to divide fraction, so this part, I'm just going to come over here to show you. So if you have to do minus 3 over 2 divided by 2 over 1, when you divide a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So you multiply by this. So it's going to give you, I'm just going to come back up here going to give you minus 3. You multiply the top with the top, the bottom with the bottom. So minus 3 over 4. So if I come back to my rule, I'm going to have minus 3 over 4x plus 3 over 2. Now you have to remember that when you want to graph this, you have to start with your initial value. 
So, well, actually, I'm going to put here. So we're going to start with our B. Our initial value is 3 over 2. 3 over 2 is 1 half. So I'm going to start with my initial value. And your negative 3 over 4, this is your rate of change. So you start going down 3 and then forward 4. So I'm going to start from here, down 3, 1, 2, 3. So I'm here, down 3, forward 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to graph my point here. You can do it the other way around. So if you go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and backward 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, you have another point here. So now you're able to graph your line like this. So this is my line number, my inequality number 3. And your y is greater than, so greater than means this. Now with all of these inequalities, you're able to find your polygon of constraints. So if you look on the left of the blue line, under the green line and above the red line, you will figure out that we have this shape that's happening here. And this is going to be our polygon of constraints. Now you see that this polygon has three vertices, so A, B, and C. And you're going to have to find out the coordinate of those vertices. In this case, it's pretty simple because the coordinates are exactly on the dot. So your A, the coordinate, will be minus 2, 3. Your B will be 2, 3. And your C will be 2, Zero. So these are the coordinates, coordinates of polygon. If they ask you for the coordinates of the polygon. All right. Now, if you had to show your work, um, you would have to find the system of inequalities. Sorry, you have the system of equality. So for example, if you had to show your work for the coordinate A, okay? You know that A is the, the intersection of inequality three and inequality two. So I'm gonna show you on the next page how you would show your work, okay? Hold on. Okay, so here is how I would like you to show your work. Okay, so for example, for coordinate A, you know it's the intersection of inequalities 2 and 3. So you can write it like this. Inequality 2, if you put it equal, because you want to find the point of intersection, is y is equal to 2. And inequality 3 is x plus 2y is equal to minus x over 2 plus 3. Now, how do you find the solution of these two, these two equations? You can use substitution, because you know y is 2. So if you use substitution, you plug it here. Substitution method. So that way you would get, okay, you would have x plus 2 and your y would be 2 is equal to minus x over 2 plus 3. And then you would show your work until you find your x is equal to. All right. Now, just a few other definitions that you might need. When we do our polygons, uh, sometimes it's going to be bounded, so it's going to be a closed figure. So, for example, if you have one inequality like this, another one like this, and another one like this, you realize that this here is bounded by three lines. So that's going to be called a bounded polygon. It's a closed figure. But if you have, let's say, your inequality going up like this, your other one going up, and finally this one, oh, sorry, not like this, but going this way, then you would see your polygon would be here, so it would be unbounded polygon. It's a figure that's not going to be closed. And finally, one more definition is the non-negative constraint. When the variables cannot be less than zero, 
which is most of the situation in real life. So whenever you're going to start a problem and they're telling you that X is the time and Y is the number of um, bags, for example, then you know your X has to be greater or equal to zero and the same with Y because both of them, they have to be positive numbers.